until 2 p.m. Okay, um, so here's some audio tips for those of you, well, everybody's joining us virtually today, including ourselves. Uh, for better sound quality, we strongly encourage you to download Zoom um, and then click audio settings to bring up any additional, uh, an additional menu. Um, add a background, background noise suppression, um, test your speaker and microphone, adjust the maximum output volumes. For presenters or public commenters, when it is your turn to speak, um, to mute or unmute, click on that little microphone icon at the bottom of your screen. Uh, expanding the menu next to the microphone will relieve or will reveal additional options. Uh, select your speaker and microphone devices. Test your microphone and speakers and adjust for their maximum output volumes. And if you still have audio challenges, you can switch to a phone for audio. All right, let's go ahead um, and do an introduction of the commissioners. First of all, I'd like to thank everybody for, for you know, for pivoting and, and changing to today, kind of changed our, uh, our our plans kind of at the last minute, and I appreciate everybody being flexible. Um, but we would, first of all, like to introduce uh, the commissioners. And since I'm already talking, I'll introduce myself. Um, I'm Julie Johnson. Um, I am a historic preservation project manager, and I was nominated by the community at large. And I'm going to just call on people at random to introduce themselves. George? Uh, hi, I'm George Dennis, uh, retired law enforcement nominated by History Colorado, and I live in a landmark home. Thank you, George. Erin. Hi, I'm Erin Hummel. I'm a landscape architect, and I was nominated by the American Society of Landscape Architects. Erin, thank you. Graham? I'm Graham Johnson, a preservation project manager nominated by the Denver Planning Board. OK, um, Gary. Well, I'm Gary Petrie. I'm an architect, and I was nominated by the Denver Planning Board. Excellent. Larry. I'm Larry Sykes. I'm an architect and I was nominated by History Colorado. Okay, Anne. There you go. No. Okay, Anne, we'll, I'll, we can come back to you. Um, Erica. Hi, I'm Erica Warzel. I'm an architectural historian and preservation consultant, and I was the only one I could be. Um, okay, and Nick. Hi, I'm Nick Fusianis, uh, nominated by the American Institute of Architects. I'm an architect and a developer. All right, and did you get did you get it unmuted? Not working. Okay. All right. If Ann can't, um, Brittany, what do we? What do you suggest if Ann can't um, get it unmuted? She... Brittany, you're also muted. Oh, okay. <laughs> Thanks. <Chris>. Um... <laughs> Thanks, Crystal. Uh, and you could try and leave the meeting and come back. Sometimes that helps. Um, but as of right now for the, the rest of the agenda, we don't quite need full quorum until design review starts. So we should probably just keep moving. OK. Um, all right. Um, all right, then let's go ahead and, and continue to move forward. Um, um, we do have meeting records for approval, March 21st, April 4th, April 18, and May 2nd of 2023. Um, commissioners, if you do you have any questions, any comments, any corrections regarding the uh, meeting records? My only comment is I wasn't here for the May 2nd meeting, so I can't um, confirm that. OK. Um, Brittany, I think it's still OK for um, if he wasn't here to go ahead and, and vote. Um, on on that as as a group is that correct? That is that is correct. Um, uh, <clears throat> the meeting records doesn't need a um, 
quorum of five, it just needs an overwhelming majority. Um, so it's up to you, Larry, if you want to vote yes or no, uh, if we vote on them as a collective. Thank you. All right. Um, okay, thanks. Uh, are there any other comments, questions, concerns regarding the meeting records? If not, do I hear a motion from the from the commissioners to approve the meeting records? Madam Chair, I will make a motion. Thanks, Graham. Meeting, yep, meeting records for March 21st, April 4th, April 18th, and May 2nd, 2023. Thank you. Do I hear a second? I'll second. Okay. Um, because we are virtual, we need to do a roll call vote. So I'll, I'll call on each of you and please give me your yay or nay when I call upon you or abstain when I call upon you. George? Yay. Aaron? Aye. Graham? Aye. Gary? Aye. Larry? Aye. Anne? Still can't hear from her. Okay. Erica? Aye. And Nick? Aye. All right. Um, even without Anne being able to join us, we've got a, a, a unanimous vote to approve the meeting records um, as they are written. Thank you very much, staff. Uh, the next um, and sorry, Julie, don't forget to vote for yourself. Oh, Julie also <laughs> votes I. Yeah, you're absolutely right. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I, sorry about that. It's been a while since we've done this. Thank you for reminding me, Brittany. Okay, um, let's go on to our next um, item. Um, and this is a point at every meeting, at the beginning of every meeting, where we reserve some time for the public to make a comment in, in general on historic preservation. These comments are, are not for one of the projects coming up, either the consent agenda or on the um, on the design review, but it, rather for um, comments on historic preservation um, in Denver in general. Um, the members would have up to two minutes for, for two minutes each for comments about historic preservation in general. Um, if you're joining by phone, please dial nine on your keypad to raise your hand or email landmark at denvergov.org with your name, phone and number. If you are joining via the computer, please click your, the little hand raise button at the bottom of your screen. Brittany, do you see anybody? Um, one second, I don't have no, no hands raised. No hands Thanks. raised? Thanks. Okay, great. Thank you very much. Then um, we will move on to the consent agenda. These are routine design review items which meet the design and guidelines and are recommended for commission approval without discussion. Um, there is no public comment for consent agenda items. Um, I will announce the consent agenda by address, um, ask the commissioners to remove any items that they're concerned about or um, if they have any questions, if they have any conflicts of interest, uh, the commission will um, make a motion to approve and then we will vote. Um, so first of all, the consent agenda is as follows, 2023-COA-157 Bannock Street Mural at Civic Center, 2022-TAXC-013, 650 Milwaukee Street, 2023-TAXC-006, 1928 East 14th Avenue, 2023-COA-174 at 18300 West Alameda Parkway and 2022-TAXC-10 at 1070 Mariposa. Commissioners, first of all, does anyone need to recuse themselves? Um, anyone need to abstain? All right, okay, cool. Um, then are there any concerns? Does anyone have any concerns, any questions for staff? I'm seeing a lot of shaking heads. Okay. All right. Um, if that is the case, then do I hear a motion from the commissioners to approve the consent agenda as presented? Uh, Madam Chair, I can make the motion. Erica, thank uh, you. Since um, you already um, went through each item, um, application number and address, do I need to restate all of those or can I just say consent agenda as stated? Good question. Brittany, Adam? Adam. <laughs> I'm really just trying to save time, but I'm probably taking up as much time asking the question. That, that's fine. If they've already been stated, you could just say the consent agenda as already stated. Thanks, Adam. All right. There you go, Erica. Thank you. Um, Madam Chair, I 
move to approve um, all five consent agenda items as um, stated, please. Erica, thank you. Do I hear a second? I'll second. Second. Graham has seconded it. All right, let's take a vote. Once again, we'll do a roll call vote. George. Aye. Aaron. Aye. Graham. Aye. Gary. Aye. Larry. Aye. Anne, have you joined us yet? No, I can't do it. Okay, Erica. Aye. Nick. Aye. And Julie also votes aye. So the consent agenda is approved as it has been presented. Thank you very much. Um, all of those uh, of you who were online um, waiting to hear about the consent agenda approval, um, you can work with the uh, Landmark staff to get your certificate, certificate of appropriateness. You do not have to hang with us for the rest of the meeting. You are, of course, welcome to do so if you wish, but you do not have to. You can log off now if you like to, and um, good luck with your projects. Uh, the next item would be uh, public hearings, but since we have none this time, we will go right into design review projects. And these are items that require individual consideration by the commission. I'll announce the items and the agenda, and um, the commissioner members, of course, will let me know if they have any conflicts of interest. Um, then the staff person in charge of that project will introduce the application and recommendation. Commissioners will have a chance to question the staff. Um, the applicant presentation, um, they have up to 10 minutes and commissioners can ask uh, questions of the applicant. Um, public comment period re, uh, comes after that and that is limited to two minutes per person. And if you would like to speak regarding one of the specific projects and you are not part of that applicant team, please click the little hand raise button at the bottom of your screen. And for those calling via phone, dial nine to raise your hand or e email landmark at denvergov.org prior to the public comment. All right. Um, first of all, let's go to the first design review project and our staff person in charge is Brittany Bryant. And it is number 2023-COA-171 at 2505 West 36th Avenue in the Potter Highlands District. Take it away, Brittany. Okay. Our first project today is for a um, addition to 2505 West 36th Avenue in Potter Highlands. This structure was constructed in 1880 and is a contributing structure to the district. It is located on a corner at the intersection of West 36th Avenue and Alcott Street with the primary um, entrance oriented to West 36th Avenue. Here you can see a photograph of the front of the property, um, which does have a addition on the left side. And then you can see the property along West 36, um, which currently has a curb cut, but there is no garage um, currently. So this application is for a garage um, addition that is connected to the property and dormer additions. So here is the um, existing and proposed roof plan, also showing the scope of demolition. Um, the scope of demolition is limited to a very minimal amount to accommodate for the rooftop dormers um, and is less than 40% and does not require a public hearing. Uh, demolition will occur on the west roof slope of the structure, which is the interior lot. The um, applicant is also proposing an attached garage um, with a small connector addition on the west side of the property. Um, this connector addition will serve as a transition space between the primary structure and the um, new garage. Uh, this, uh, to accommodate this garage, um, the existing curb cut will be moved to the north of the property um, to allow for access to the garage. So while we typically don't allow for new curb cuts, as this property does not have alley access, there already is an existing curb cut. Um, we have allowed this condition in these uh, specific circumstances. So staff are supportive of this move of the existing curb cut to allow access to this garage. Um, additionally, the commission has previously reviewed this application at the um, March 20, our first meeting, and the commission did not have major concerns over the garage addition, um, and that scope of work has not changed at this time. 
So here is the primary um, south elevation. Uh, there will be minimal changes to this elevation. Um, a new dormer will be added forward of the cross gable um, on the uh, west roof slope. Uh, you can see that dormer here. It is a gable roof dormer. Um, it is very simple and small scale in design. Uh, previously, the applicant was proposing to clad that dormer in lap siding. The applicant has changed that material to a uh, fish scale shingle. Um, however, that product is a um, plastic material, so staff do have some concerns over the um, prefabricated nature of these shingles that are proposed for the dormer and would recommend a wood um, or an, a wood like product that the commission has previously approved that rep replicates uh, wood shingles better than the plastic product that the applicant has currently proposed because it is a panelized product. Here is the um, west elevation. So in the orange box, you can see the prior proposal and um, in the uh, not in the orange box is the current proposal. So in the prior proposal along Alcott Street, the applicant was proposing to raise um, the roof ridge behind the cross gable and the revised version, the roof ridge will not no longer be raised and will be retained and the appearance of the structure largely will be maintained from the street. Um, as you can see in the elevation here, uh, the garage will face onto Alcott Street and then it does have that small um, connector addition that you can see. Uh, again, Commission did not have major concerns over the addition for the garage or the garage addition as um, it was identifiable as new, um, but compatible and subordinate to the existing structure. Uh, here is the rear elevation at the top of the screen in the orange box is the previous version. In the previous version, staff were very concerned because addition to raising the ridge height of the original structure, um, it would also demolish the uh, eave of the roof um, along this elevation and significantly change the profile of the roof. The applicant has restudied that and preserved the eave line along the north elevation, as you can see in the elevation um, on the left side of your screen. And then down below is the west elevation in which you can see the two dormer additions that are proposed. That dormer addition behind the cross gable is for a new master bedroom. Um, it is quite large in nature still, but it is preserving the original ridge line and eaves of the historic structure. Um, it is not inset from the original wall plane below because it is sitting on a structural member. Um, but it is inset from an addition wall plane below that you can see in this image here. Uh, while the dormer has not been reduced significantly in scale, staff feel that the revisions to the dormer form and the preservation of the historic roof are compatible with the design guidelines. And because this dormer is located behind a cross gable form and is on the interior lot side of this property, it will have minimal visibility from the public right away and are therefore recommending approval of the dormers as you see today um, with the condition that the materials for the dormers be revised to a material that meets the design guidelines better. Um, the applicant is also proposing uh, casement windows with divided lights. I still don't see in the applicant materials where these uh, divided lights will be a simulated divided light with a spacer bar or a true divided light. Um, however, I would like to note that staff did have some concerns over the divided light form as the historic house has divided lights. Um, this will be a different window operation, but it will still have those divided lights. Uh, the casement operation may be enough to distinguish the windows as new. Um, and when staff listened to the commission discussion from the March 21st meeting, there wasn't an overwhelming amount of consensus or guidance on the divided lights. Um, so I think it would be good for the Commission to discuss those today. Um, the garage and the garage connector edition will still be clad in that lap siding materials. So that material has not changed. Uh, here is just the proposal in plan. Um, so you can see the 
uh, in section and plan the head height that is proposed and then the inset of the windows that the applicant has proposed. The, out, uh, the windows will be inset two inches per our design guidelines. And then finally, here are some isometric renderings showing the proposed project scope. So staff are recommending conditional approval with a restudy of the um, fish scale shingle material and additional um, information on the casement windows that they be a um, devoid of a divided light or be a simulated divided light with a spacer bar. Okay, Brittany, thank you very much. Commissioners, do you have, does anyone have any questions for Brittany at this point? Seeing some shaking heads. All right. Okay, great. Thank you very much, Brittany. Um, is our applicant with us today? I think they're getting moved over. Okay, great. Jordan and Rich, you should be able to unmute and turn on your camera now if you'd like. Wonderful. Thank you. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah. Hi, Jordan. Yeah, we can't hear you. Um, hi. Great, yeah. I'll give Rich a second to join as well. Okay, great. So um, you, the two of you will have, um, as applicants, 10 minutes uh, together to tell us about your project. And then before you, at the beginning, when you start speaking, please give us your name and your address for our records. Sounds great. Yeah, thank you. One second while I um, bring up that timer. And has Rich, is he? Is Rich with us yet? Yeah. We just see him. Let me see. I am not seeing him yet. Let me, uh, if it's all right, if I could go poke my head in his office and just make <laughs> he, sure he's he in. Is he in is in there. Yeah. I've sent him the request, but. He's not joining, so maybe. <laughs> okay. Be away from the computer. Sure. Let me um just go poke my head in if that's all right. Make sure. Yeah, sure. Real fast. Oh, there he is. Can you hear me now? Yeah, I can hear oh, you. I didn't know how to join as a panelist. I'm sorry. I, I didn't. Uh... <laughs> That's okay. So I've got Jordan. Jordan still is muted right now, but now I've got the two of you. All right. Okay. Uh, Y'all have wonderful. 10 minutes to tell us about your project and please begin with your name and your addresses, please. Go ahead, Jordan. Great. My name is Jordan. Rich is also on. We're at 215 South Wadsworth Street, Suite 300. And as Brittany had said in her narrative, we really worked with her to revise the addition in a way that fit the guidelines. We, you know, understood the committee's concern about keeping the ridge line at its historic level and not raising it. We feel that a revised design is a more appropriate approach, and we're certainly happy to work with Brittany to address her concerns about the siding material and the divided light windows. Uh, the windows we had picked out were a simulated divided light, so we'll, we can send that over to Brittany and clarify, but I think that our approach still addresses our client's concern. We had spoke about last time of expanding their bedroom, you know, creating a place for their family while still maintaining the historic form and character of the neighborhood, along with the uh, LPC guidelines for the project. Rich, is there anything you wanted to add? No, the only thing I was um, I was hung up on, not hung up on, but just I heard um, from Brittany is like, uh, did did you say Brittany that the, the dormers could be could use the same cladding as the garage? So this is your time to present. I'll do a oh, recap at the end. Okay. So. Uh, I had I had heard. That you did not like the um, the shingles, the, the fish scale shingles. We certainly can use the the, the garage. We're, we're very open to it. That was my that was my only comment. All right, all right then, gentlemen, are you done with your presentation? Yeah. Okay. That's all from us. Thank you Excellent. for your time. Excellent. Thank you. All right, commissioners, do you have any questions for the applicants? Uh, I'm not seeing any. I'm not hearing any. Okay, great. Um, 
then we will go on. Thank you very much, applicants, Rich and Jordan. Thanks. Thank you. Um, you're welcome. Uh, so we are to the point of public comment for the design review. If you are joining by phone, dial nine on your phone uh, keypad to raise your hand or email landmark at denvergov.org. Um, if you are on the computer with us, just click the hand raise button at the bottom of your screen and you'll have two minutes to provide comment. At the beginning of the comment, please give your name and your address for the records. Do we have anybody joining us? And that's hands raised. Hands raised. Nobody? Thanks, Taylor. <laughs> Hi, Taylor. Thank you. All right. Um, then, um, then we will not have any public comments for, for this project. Um, then, Brittany, would you, um, do you have, commissioners, do you have any other questions for staff at this point? Okay. Brittany, did you have any um, redirect? Yeah, so just a quick recap. The applicant had proposed lap siding and the prior submittal. I had concerns that that was too replicative of the existing siding material, and the commission also indicated that. So I would encourage they uh, keep the shingle material, just revise it to a um, shingle material that the commission can review and approve um, and we could do that administratively it wouldn't have to come back to you the commission for for that additional review okay um so, can, sorry can, i just want to clarify so you um you mean to suggest keeping the fish scale pattern um type of shingle but um changing the material to be wood or wooden Correct. Okay. I'm getting it kind of a Correct. weird lag. Like, Sorry, my internet's really slow, so I don't yeah, know. Yeah, <laughs> getting a little bit of a weird lag time, but I think we understood that. Commissioners, any other questions for staff? I see a lot of shaking heads. All righty then. Um, commissioners, let us go into deliberation to talk about this. Um, what do you think? What are your thoughts on this application? Uh, I'll jump in. I, I thought the um, revised dormer um, uh, to the north of the property was um, um, much improved, and I think much better monitor uh, guidelines. So I would um, be in support of that. And um, generally, are um, in support of um, the staff's recommendations. I was curious how other commissioners felt about the casement window uh, light patterns. Um, am I kind of quiet? It seems like maybe some people are having a hard time hearing me. Um, so I was wondering if um, I, I, I'm of the opinion, I think the um, two over two light pattern um, on the casement windows of the connector are probably um, too replicative of the um, original Victorian windows that we see on the main house. So I would be in support of um, a simplified uh, light pattern, whether it's um, a single light or even one over one um, pa pattern with a spacer bar in between. But I was curious what other commissioners thought of that. Okay, thanks, Erica. Gary, you had your hand. Um, yeah, uh, regarding the siding, and I, um, you know, the, the building has had previous additions, and the previous additions have been clad with wood siding. So if wood siding, beveled siding, was used on the new dormers, I don't think that there'd be any confusion that would be created by being too replicative because I think the building as it stands has had previous additions that kind of indicate that this was a, um, a modified building. So I, I, as far as I'm concerned, it, we can go with wood, wood shingles or wood siding, I doesn't matter to me. Okay, great. Um, yeah, Larry. I think on that note too, you know, there's a little bit of inconsistency where the garage has lap siding. It looks like the the part of the connector that faces the yard 
and maybe the other part of it too has yeah has lap siding and so why wouldn't lap siding make sense for the dormers as well um i think that the whole thing would just be a bit more cohesive um if everything were lap i wouldn't i wouldn't be opposed to that but i also wouldn't be necessarily opposed to shingle since we've determined that that would be acceptable as well um, and regarding the uh the windows yeah i i think that because of the scale the small scale of the connector windows i don't feel that yeah dividing those um makes any sense on that front and as as far as uh being simplified yeah they, they just they seem because of the scale to look extra complex um compared to the existing okay larry thank you um any other comments? Anne, have you been able to fix your mute? I just fixed it. Um, you have. Yay. I'm back. Um, well, I'd like to commend the applicant because I think, as we said before, it's very difficult to put an addition on a higgledy piggledy. I believe that was our technical term last Yes, time. yes. <laughs> and not be replicative because that's actually what it was to begin with. And I think um, I agree with the staff report. I think what they're proposing is really successful. Um, and um, I have to say, I also uh, agree with my fellow commissioners that the um, dormer doesn't necessarily need to be a small shingle material. It could be a siding material. Um, and that would also be appropriate with the sort of additive nature of what's here. Um, and I also agree that I think the window should be simple. Okay, great. Good, good job, applicant. Yeah, indeed. Thank you. Um, so I've not heard from Graham, George, or Nick. Any comments, guys? I don't think that I have anything to add. I, I agree with staff's assessment and, and the comments made so far. Okay. George? Well, I, the uh, the connector piece is, is so inset uh, that... Uh, whether it's it's shingle or siding, I, I think is like someone said, small scale. The same with the window. I, I really like how they handle the roof line um, mm -hmm. uh, question that we had. And boy, if that gives them the space they need mm -hmm. for the family, I'm certainly can support the uh, staff suggestions. All right, George, thank you. Nick, any thoughts? Uh, I agree uh, with uh, my colleagues uh, and the staff report. Uh, I would also add that um, I'm indifferent relative to the cladding of the new roof protrusion. Um, I can see the benefit of it being different. I can see the benefit of it being the same. Mm -hmm. I don't think uh, that either approach uh, would uh disqualify it from meeting the guidelines. Uh, so I support it. All righty. Okay, commissioners, it sounds like we're in agreement then. Um, are there any other comments or questions before we ask for a motion? Doesn't sound like, do I hear a motion from the commissioners? I can try a motion. And that'd be great. Okay. Um, Madam Chair, I move to conditionally approve application number 2023-COA-171 for the garage and dormer additions at 2505 West 36th Avenue for design guidelines 2.28, 3.4 to 3.7, 3.9, 4.18 to 420, character defining features for the Potter Highlands Historic District, presented testimony and submitted documentation and information provided in the staff report with the following conditions. Uh, material within the dormers be wood or a manufactured wood product. And two, the casement windows to be devoid of divided lights or have a simulated divided light with spacer bar. And thank you. Do I hear a second? 
I'll type in, but I, I do have a friend in amendment. Okay, Erica. Um, um, Erica, a second, uh, go ahead with the friendly amendment. I would suggest that uh, condition two remove the phrase or have a simulated divided life with space or home to read casement windows to be devoid of divided life. Period. Do you accept that, Anne? I'm sorry, can you say it one more time, please? Yeah, I could hardly hear you, Erica. That'd be great. I'm sorry, I don't know why my volume is so bad. Um, I'll move closer. I don't think that'll change anything. Um, I was suggesting moving, removing the um, last phrase of the second condition so that the second condition reads, casement windows to be devoid of divided lights, period. Oh, I accept. Okay, thank you, Anne. Um, then we will take... Um, uh, roll call vote again. George. Aye. Aaron. Aye. Graham. Aye. Gary. Aye. Larry. Aye. Anne. Aye. Erica. Aye. Nick. Aye. And I also vote aye. All right. Um, the 2023-COA-171 um, has been unanimously um, approved by the commissioners. Thank you very much. We are now on to our second and final design review project today. 2023-COA-172 at 617 East 4th Avenue in the Alamo Placita District. And again, it's Brittany Bryant, um, our staff person in charge. Go for it, Brittany. So our last application is for alterations to a contributing structure within the Alamo Placita Historic District. Um, all alterations are proposed to secondary facades of the primary structure and the non-contributing garage structure. Um, however, as this property is located on an alley, um, the uh, East facade is very visible from the public right away. So that's what you're seeing in this image here um, that is showing that that facade is very visible. And as our guidelines require changes to character defining features that are visible from the public right away be forwarded to the commission for review, we have forwarded this application to you today. Um, this property is a sister house to 601 East 4th Avenue, and they actually share um, a garage structure that is uh, attached and split between the two properties. Um, so that's what you're seeing in this aerial image here. <clears throat> so as I mentioned, um, alterations are proposed to window and door openings. On the front facade, there are no changes to the primary structure. However, the applicant is proposing to replace door at garage door with a new garage door. Um, the door shown in this elevation isn't exactly the door design um, that the applicant is proposing to replace with. Um, that is in your packet. I don't have it in the presentation. However, staff have concerns over the replacement door that the applicant has proposed, as it does appear that the um, property to the left does have the original garage door, which has a solid panel below um, and lights above the two carriage style doors that that um, garage has. As garages are not contributing structures in the Alamo Placida Historic District, um, we would like to see the garage door more similarly match the adjacent property but don't feel that it has to be an exact replica of that existing door. So something more with a four panel design appearance of the existing garage door would be more appropriate staff feel. So we are recommending um, that as a condition to this application, uh, but no other changes are proposed to the front facade of the structure. So along the alley elevation, which is the visible elevation that triggered review before the commission, the applicant is proposing to move over this group of paired windows um, and the overall positioning and placement and size of that, or the positioning will change, but the overall proportions, placement and configuration of that window will not change. And this is due to interior alterations that are occurring on the property. 
Um, the applicant will inset the brick uh, for the infill into the wall plane and then replicate the soldier course header and sill uh, that you see on the historic property with the same color brick that will be from Mendoza. Um, so staff are recommending approval of this alteration as it is a, a secondary facade um, and generally speaking the window proportions are maintained and with the brick infill being inset you'll be able to see where the original opening was located. On the uh, west facade, the applicant is proposing to infill an existing door opening uh, with brick that are, again will be inset into the opening to preserve the appearance and location of that opening. Uh, this opening is very hard to see because this is the opening that faces onto that garage that you saw in the first prep, uh, picture. Um, so this will have very limited visibility from the public right away. On the rear elevation, the applicant is proposing to introduce two new egress windows um, on either side of the chimney that is located at the rear, and then also um, introduce a new door with side light and soldier course uh, header above that and the lighter beige brick that is typical of um, the headers and sills on this property. Um, this is the rear elevation, so staff did feel that these alterations were appropriate and did not have concerns over um, these proposed changes. Uh, the egress window well will be a corrugated metal well, as you can see in this section here, and it will be a casement detail. Um, and then you can see that end set uh, brick and fill that will be used on the openings that are proposed to be altered that is inset one inch. And then all new windows will be inset to match the existing window inset. And then finally, on the garage facade that faces west, the applicant is proposing to introduce a new uh, full light door opening. Again, this facade is very difficult to see because this is the facade that faces onto the historic house. So it's very tight proximity um, between those facades where they're uh, altering a door opening on the historic house and introducing a new opening on the garage property. Um, so generally speaking, staff are supportive of the proposed changes with the condition that the um, garage door more similarly match the design of the garage door on the adjacent property. Okay, Brittany, thank you very much. Um, commissioners, do you have any questions? for? <coughs> Doesn't look like it. Okay, Brittany, thank you very much. All right, um, do we have our applicant with us? Sarah and Emily, you should be able to unmute and turn your camera on now. It's not a mute. Oh, there we go. Can you hear us now? <laughs> yeah, we can hear you. Okay, you can't see us, but I um... uh, can't see you. <laughs> okay. okay. That's okay. Um okay. So just to... <laughs> You've got 10 minutes to tell us about your project and please begin that 10 minutes with your name and your addresses so we can have those for our records, please. And okay. if you could just hold on a second, I'm having an issue getting the timer up. So one second. Oh, no. I'm trying to get our camera in the meantime. <laughs> start video, start video. Yeah, it didn't take as long to get out of, out of habit of doing Zoom meetings, did it? <laughs> oh, there we are. <laughs> yeah. You're there. Oh. You made it. <laughs> okay, I have uh, the timer up, so I'm going to hit start now. Okay. All right, anytime you're ready, applicants. All right. My name is Emily Hirsch. My address is 3921 Bryant Street uh, in Denver. And I am Sarah Sexton, and address is 1627 Gilpin Street in Denver. Thank you. Um, thank you, Brittany. I think she provided a really great summary of our project. Um, it's a tiny little house and we're just trying to rework the interior a little bit to um, make it work for a growing family. Um, they love their house, they love their neighborhood and really didn't want to change much about it. Um, but there, there were some things on the exterior that had to change just based on what we did inside. Um, but we tried to keep those changes to non-visible side of the street and um, didn't change the roof, didn't change anything about the front. Um, we're just trying to really respect the historical structure. No, thank you. 
Yeah, and just the work we are doing on the garage and on the back of the house really is not visible much at all due to that really tight site and then the, the fences along the alley. Mm -hmm. And I think I think that pretty much covers it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> all right. Um, thank you very much. Commissioners, do you have any questions for the applicants? Erica. Yeah. Could you just describe um, the, the need for moving the window on the east elevation? Did you hear me? Um, yeah, I don't know, Brittany, if you have the plan that you can pull up or not, but um, we're creating a kind of a little vestibule mudroom at the front of the house. Um, and just to give them kind of a little bit of a landing space for their family and to kind of divide, keep the living room a little bit more separate. So the wall that kind of divides the mudroom in the front from the living room in the back kind of hits right where that existing window was. Um, and we want to keep as much light as possible um, going into that living room. So we we're hoping we could just kind of slide that opening down, keep the same proportions and the same size, um, but just relocate it. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And I don't have the floor plans in in my presentation, but you should have that in your packet. OK. okay. <clears throat> Commissioners, do you have any other questions for our applicants? Well, it doesn't look like it. All right, applicants, thank you very much. Thank um, you. No, you're welcome. Um, let's move on to see if there are any uh, public comments. Um, if you are joining, uh, you've probably heard this before, dial nine on your phone keypad to raise your hand or email landmark at denvergov.org uh, with your name and phone number. So if you would like to speak, if you are on the computer with us, just raise the little hand um, button uh, at the bottom of your screen and you'll be given two minutes to provide your comment. Do we have any hand raises, anybody? No hands raised. Nobody wanting to talk to us. Okay, all right. Uh, so no public comments. Um, staff, was there any redirection that, or any, any additional comments you wanted to make? I don't have any. You don't have any? Okay, commissioners, any questions for staff before we deliberate? Doesn't look like it, that's great. Okay, then let's go into deliberation. Um, commissioners, what are your thoughts on the garage door and the window? Well, I've got no uh, no issue with the uh, movement of the window being on on a, a more secluded side, and absolutely agree with the garage door recommendation um, that a uh, it can still look like a carriage door and be a roll up if if that's what they want. But uh, yeah, something else there would would work just fine. And otherwise, it's uh, it's a slam dunk. I really agree with. Uh, the staff and just do something with the door. Thank you. Thanks, George. Other comments, commissioners? Nick. Uh, so I guess kind of a question uh, for uh, my colleagues as well as staff uh, or just something to discuss as I'm uh, new uh, to the commission. Uh, the window that is on the east wall that moved um, and the the memory of it, uh, for lack of a better word, uh, in its original location is is that uh, historically or not to overuse the word, but traditionally how we solve for these things, or is it um, a nice to have? I just I look at it and I, I don't think if you if you simply move it and then you weave in the brick uh, as it matches the rest of the field uh it's would be less noticeable i don't know if the the centering of that window is material but i defer to my colleagues on that does anybody have a comment for nick gary well i have a problem with moving the window um because the window is centered in that wall and that's part of its of that facade's character i mean if this was not exposed to an alley, I think it'd be more lenient, but I have a problem with me moving the window. And, you know, if the consensus of the group is to move the window, I would recommend not recessing the brick in the infill, 
because that would really make that facade, that would really scar that facade. I'd, I'd consider that a serious um, intrusion into the original character of the building. Um, but primarily, I object to moving the window. Um, uh, I understand that there's a desire to change the interior to be a little more functional, but I think there's maybe ways of accommodating that interior change without having to move the window. Okay, Erica. Yeah, I, I agree um, fully with Barry that um, I, I think moving the window is, um, you know, we don't define within guideline 2.14, what do we mean by pattern and proportion of window openings, but I think in this case, I think it's clearly changing the proportion and the pattern, as Gary pointed out, of it being centered on that wall, um, which is a relatively small wall. And this is a relatively large window that is kind of the main feature to see <clears throat> besides um, the contrast in brick color. So I, I personally do not think that this meets guideline 2.14. And I agree, however, that if we were to approve it being moved, that in this case, in setting the brick would um, detract so much from an understanding of how this mm -hmm. um, house was supposed to be viewed, that I, I don't think it does us any good by um, having it in this case. So kind of reiterating what Barry said. But... Okay, Erica, thanks. Um, Larry. I guess a couple of thoughts and questions. The first question being, I guess I didn't catch in the application that um, that the intent was to inset the brick. It looked to me like the there was a note about lacing the brick into the existing, which would suggest it being in plain. Yeah. Is that what other people are seeing? That's kind of what I understood, Larry. But okay, um, which I think. Yeah, if it did get in filled with brick would be the logical thing to do. Um, I mean, I don't disagree with the spirit of these comments about, um, you know, that nor under a lot of circumstances, shifting a large window like that in a wall would be, um, would not seem compatible. I think given that this is kind of in a funny, like alley house kind of a context, I'm inclined to grant some flexibility, um, you know, that yes, you can see that from the street, but this is almost sort of functioning like the back of a carriage house or something like that um, in terms of its urban context. So I just, it doesn't feel like it's a prominent location of concern to me. So I, I'd be open to approving it as is. All right, thanks, Larry. Um, Anne, what are you thinking? I mean, I, I guess the question I was going to ask staff is sort of the definition of a, um, of a right of way elevation. Because to me, that's sort of what it comes down to. If it was on the front of the house, we wouldn't allow it. And this house sort of has the luxury of having this alley. I don't think that it meets um, guideline 2.14 if this is actually a, um, a primary facade. And unfortunately, from the photographs, it looks as if it is. So you really see the facade. And I also have to say that I think that the problem is compounded by um, the infill brick. That if the, that big window were just moved over and sort of centered over the window, you know, if it would, if it looked more as if it could have been, you know, thought through with the rest of the bill, it would be. But um, so I am really not sure. I guess maybe I would like to ask if we can, Brittany again, what what she feels about this in terms of its being a um, um, primary facade. So we don't consider alleys public right away. Um, so we would not consider this a primary facade and it's the same importance of a um, corner facade like the Alcott Street facade we just saw in the last project. Um, 
However, uh, we forwarded it to the commission, not because we consider it a primary facade, just because the alley does give additional visibility to that facade as you're standing on 4th Avenue. Um, so that's kind of how we were evaluating the changes is that not that it's a primary facade um, and our guidelines do say that uh, additional flexibility can be given to secondary facades. Um, we do traditionally do require applicants to maintain um, kind of a ghosting of the original opening, and that's why you do see that note that the infill will be inset one inch. Um, there may be some conflicting information in your packet because initially the applicant was proposing to just um, not inset that infill so you may be seeing those two notes but it is my understanding that um, we have traditionally required that and so the applicant did make changes to their packet to show that infill and set a one inch but if the commission feels that it further compounds the changes you are more than welcome to approve it um, if you approve the window being moved with the brick all the way flush with the rest of the facade. Um, so that's kind of where we were at is that um, this did require your review because it was highly visible, but highly visible from the East 4th Avenue facade, not the alley, alley in and of itself is that's not considered public right of way. Okay, go ahead, Erica. Sorry, um, I just, you know, the guidelines don't actually talk about right of way. like facades on right of ways. They talk, it talks about um, 2.14a, you know, modifying a window um, may be considered on a facade that is not visible. And then it says um, 2.14b to maintain original size and shape of window and door openings on the primary facade. So it, my reading of that is that it, you know B is dictating don't change the primary facade, but and there but there might be um, flexibility on facades that are not visible. Um, so I don't actually see how right of way comes into this at all, um, because I think it clearly is visible. Um, and also just as a note that it, there is definitely in the applicant materials on sheet A three point three it does note in setting the brick one inch, um, although it says it doesn't mention it in other places. So the, that um, issue remains of in setting, as Brittany said, but I just wanted to point out where it says it in the applicant. So I, I do want to clarify, um, um, and apologies if my use of right away is confusing, but on page 10 of the design guidelines, it does clarify visibility and what um, what we use to determine and trigger that view. Um, so that is in a box and it says visibility and public vantage points. A project determined to be visible from public vantage points is one that is partially seen by a person of average height from publicly used space, such as a park, campus, grounds, or from a roadway other than a residential alley. Um, so we again when we're talking about this being visible we're talking about it, it's visible along fourth not while standing on the alley specifically okay <laughs> all right um nick have we sort of kind of uh given you more yes no i appreciate the discussion okay. yeah. and um uh, it it seems like we don't really have a clear consensus, but I'll give you my opinion. Sure. Um, and that is that uh, that, that one inch uh, brick recess as it applies to the former location of the window on the alleyway and the man door at the back of the house, I, I, I just think it does, uh, doesn't do a service to the overall look of the house. Uh, or uh, the overall impression on the design district. Mm -hmm. uh, and second, uh, the movement of the window uh, on the alley, uh, I think is immaterial relative to the view as well. The, the proportions change a little bit on that elevation, but the perception of it, I believe, from the public viewpoint is imperceptible. 
Okay, so it sounds like you're okay with moving the window as long as they don't do the one inch inset. Yeah, and 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 eliminate the one inch inset at the man door. It just it looks door. like a, a patch and a mistake, and I, I think it would be a disservice to the to the structure. Okay, all right, um, Graham. We haven't heard from you. Do you have any thoughts? You bet. I'm I'm torn because I see the functionality, and I think you know. The idea of speaking to the change is appealing. Um, the idea of primary versus secondary versus visible facade comes up often in our deliberation. Mm -hmm. You know, I think that we've seen in Alamo Posita a couple times lately, folks that are engaging with the, you know, the style there, which is a smaller footprint without pop tops and other things that might otherwise, you know, be a major adjustment to these homes, which have a great character. Mm -hmm. And for that reason, you know, I, I appreciate working with the the smaller footprint and, and even if that means rearranging a bit inside. So, um, you know, I, I'm on the fence, but I would tend to, I, I think, roll with staff's recommendation short of the recess like we've been talking about here, um, as Larry mentioned earlier and a few other commissioners. Yeah, I, I I believe I'm in agreement with you all. I, I agree with the one inch inset. It may be what we've traditionally done and approved to, um, to show the ghost marking and show what was there, but it's such a small structure. I think maybe that's what um, bothers me about the inset. Um, it really is such a small structure that I think it really would make um, quite an impact in the, in the appearance. But I think I am also leaning on um, being okay with moving the window. Um, I have, uh, if I've taken my notes properly, oh, Aaron, we haven't talked to you, have we? No, you've not. Um, what are you thinking? I concur with moving the window that I think that's acceptable. And partially with what Graham said of not doing a major addition or pop top on this, that allowing the owner to modify the house to suit their needs, I think is a valuable thing to do without major modification. So I'm okay moving the window. I agree that the one inch inset is distracting. I've always thought they're distracting mm -hmm. and understand, you know, we do want to show the history of it. But I also think that we need to do an, an infill you know, the mortar is not going to match exactly. The bricks are going to, it's going to look fresh anyway. It's not going to have the age. Yeah. I think it will stand out even in fill being flush. So long-winded way to say um, I'm okay with moving the window. I don't think we need to have the recessed brick. And I also agree with having a more compatible style of garage door to something similar to the sister house's garage door, but still being a functional roll-up door. Yeah, do, do the, we didn't uh, talk about that as a big group about the garage door. Does, is everybody pretty much in agreement about with the staff regarding the garage door? Okay, that's that's good. I got some nodding heads there. So I sound. I think I've got. If I took my notes right, I've got two people, two commissioners, not interested in moving the window, and that would be Erica and Gary. Um, but others are flexible and would be okay with it. Um, but we do need, um, if somebody wants to make a motion to that effect, to approve the moving of the window, everyone, as I can see, is in agreement about the one inch inset. Um, we need to take that, we need, um, that needs to be as a condition that it should be, I guess, flush to the, to the building. Is that also correct? I'm getting from people. Okay, Erica, did you have a question? Uh, yeah, sorry. I just wanted to clarify because Mitch had mentioned um, the inside of the main door on the right the west elevation. I would still be in support of that um, because I I think it's in this case it's um, it's not scarring or competing with this like kind of symmetrical understanding of um that facade and it's actually indicating how you know residents previously would have accessed the garage um so i i would just like to throw that out there that um 
recognizing that Nick brought it up, but I, I think in this case, that should remain, um, the, the one inch inset should remain. Okay. Commissioners, how do, how do the rest of you feel about that, George? Well, I, I uh, in listening to my uh, associates here, I think I could go with um, uh, either, either way as the owner wishes, but if they did not want to do the one inch inset, I agree with those who pointed out it's kind of a scar on such a small um, uh, small view that uh, it might, uh, to Aaron's point, it's going to look pretty fresh anyway. Um, it, it will weather in, but you'll still know for a very long time there was a window there and uh, long past me noticing anyway. So uh, I would be okay with... Uh, uh, not insisting on the inset for the window. I'll stick with the garage door, but and I'm okay with moving the window. So that's a, a bit of a change from how I felt. So. Okay, so um, commissioners, how do you feel about Erica's last comment about the man door should be inset? Any particular thoughts on that? That's fine with me. Okay, Larry, you saw your hand. Oh yeah, just that because of that facade is, basically not visible. I mean, we've been talking about visibility and that's the one that's really not visible. <laughs> I don't have a strong concern about it. Okay. Either way. All right. Um, then uh, is somebody, oh, Anne. I just want to make a friendly comment. I believe that in the staff report, the East and the West are swapped in guideline 2.14. Okay. I just say that because I think we haven't really been talking about the west side, which I, I, I'm i fine going with the staff report, but because they're swapped, it se makes it seem as if the west side is in question, which I don't believe that it is. So that's the reason. Okay. Brittany, did you have any, any comment? Um, I would say that is correct. I haven't <laughs> looked at my staff report in over a week, so I can't confirm <laughs> that they're swapped. But yeah, the west side is the one that is adjacent to the garage and is not super visible from the public right away. Okay, great. And thanks for the clarification. All right, um, commissioners, it looks, it sounds to me that we're coming kind of to a conclusion here. Um, so a motion um, would be with con approval with, the, with conditions. Sounds like everybody's in agreement with the garage door. And it sounds like everyone's in agreement with the man door being inset. Um, a motion it's, I think that would be, that would pass would include moving of the window, but not inset of the new brick. Is that, how does that sound guys? Does that sound appropriate? All right, it, would somebody out there in Commissioner World, like to take a shot at that motion. I'll give it a try. Thank you. Um, Madam Chair, I move to conditionally approve application number 2023 CLA 172 or the opening modifications at 617 East 4th Avenue as per guidelines 2.14, 2.24. 3.7 character defining features for the Alamo Placida Historic District, presented testimony, submitted documentation and information provided in the staff report with the following conditions. One, that the garage door design have a panel proportion similar to the adjacent historic garage door. Two, that the door, the man door facing the uh, garage that was removed, the opening brick and fill the inset, and three, the brick on the east facade in fill be flush with the existing brick. All right, thank you, Larry. Uh, do I hear a second? I'll second. Graham has seconded it, then let's take a vote. Um, George. Hi. Aaron? Aye. Graham? Aye. Gary? Nay. Larry? Aye. Ann? Aye. Erica? Nay. 
All right, Nick. Aye. And Julie also votes aye. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Um, aye and two nay. And so um, it passes uh, with the conditions. Um, and that means that we are done with our design review projects. Thank you very much, crew. And we are on to our business item. And um, Kara Hahn is going to talk to us about 2323 East Dakota Street, um, the Hegner House. Is that pronounced correct? I think it's the Hegner, but I don't actually know. I've only ever read it and haven't seen it. Um, <laughs> okay, okay we could both be wrong together then, Kara. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> anyway, thanks, Kara. Go for it. Um, I have the um, business item process. Oh, screen, I'm sorry. Julie, These are items voter. for commission deliberation and voting. Chair will announce each business item on the agenda, which I actually just did, I guess. Staff will introduce the business item. Uh, commissioners can question uh, the staff and then public comment will occur after that and everyone will be given two minutes per person. Um, staff clarif can clarify if necessary. Uh, the commission will deliberate and the commission will make a motion and vote. So Kara, please, please go ahead. Kara, I think you're muted. If you're talking, you're muted. One second, it's confusing with the no screen sharing. No worries. Here, I'm gonna stop sharing, Kara, so you can unmute yourself. Thank you, sorry about that. I was like desperately trying to figure out where the unmute was. It's okay. Okay, one second while I get this PowerPoint back up. Wait, while, while Brittany's doing that, so we are um, reviewing a um, National Register nomination um, as a certified local government, which we are certified by the state of Colorado and the Park Service. Um, one of uh, the roles of the LPC is to uh, review and comment on National Register nominations. Uh, the reviews are based on the four National Register criteria rather than our 10 criteria. And a property only needs to meet one of the four of the criteria in order to be designated. So this is for the property at 2323 East Dakota Street, the Hegner, Hegner House. Um, uh, so it was constructed in 1936 um, and designed by um, uh, Casper Foreman Hegner, who is the architect. Uh, the property is significant at the state level, um, and the period of significance is um, 1936 to 1949, not 1963 to 1949, as my dyslexia shows up on the screen. So um, uh, this is a good example of the international style in a residence in Denver. It is believed to be the first international residential property dis, um, designed in the state of Colorado. Um, Casper Foreman Hegner is a um, architect. He's a master architect. He worked on a variety of um, other residential properties. However, they have been um, modified over time. He also worked with Temple Buell. He worked for the Bureau of Rec. Um, he designed the DU classroom building and one of my very favorite buildings in Denver, the Ross Barnum Library on Lincoln or Broadway. Now I can't remember which way, I think it's on Lincoln. Um, and so he is a, a master architect. He designed this as his residence for him and his wife. They lived in it for um, a number of years before moving out of the state of Colorado. And so the National Register nomination puts forward that it's significant under Criterion C as an excellent example of the international style for a residential building. Um, but this is a um, also significant as an example of the work of a master architect um, and that it's significant at the state level versus the local level um, due to its uh, being one of the early residences um, designed in the international style. And so landmark preservation um, staff 
agrees with that and recommends that you forward this to the National Register um, keeper. And I'm happy to answer any questions you guys might have. Great, thank you, Kara. Um, commissioners, do you have any questions for Stout? I just have to say, I've always wondered what it's like inside of the bubble garage, which um, <laughs> I was excited to see in the photos. I remember that even as a small kid driving up and down university. <laughs> completely uh non-academic there that's okay no it's a it's a good it's a good point um all right if there aren't any questions for staff um are there any public comments anybody would like to make a public comment do we have any hands raised no hands raised no okay thanks taylor uh so is there any public comments and commissioners let's just go ahead and go into uh, deliberation about this Shall we recommend that this be forwarded? Yes, it would be fabulous. I see a lot of nodding heads. Okay. All right. Well, without further ado, do I hear a motion from the commissioners? I can make it. Make it. Erica, thank you. Yep, Madam Chair, I move to recommend that the National Register nomination for the Hegner House at 2323 East Dakota Street be forwarded to the keeper of the National Register of Historic Places for presented testimony, submitted documentation, and information provided in the staff report. Aaron, thank you very much. Do I hear a second? Second. Second. I think Gary, I think Gary won that one. All right. Uh, all right, let's do a roll call vote. George. Aye. Aaron. Aye. Graham. Aye. Gary. Aye. Larry. Aye. Anne. Aye. Erica. Aye. Nick. I, I also, Julie also says I, so it is passed unanimously, unanimously, Kara, um, feel free to forward that on um, with our compliments to the, to the keeper. All right, so discussion items, we have Crystal Marquez and Alec Miller talking uh, about modernizing zoning variances, text amendment updates. It's a mouthful. Go ahead, Crystal. <laughs> It is a lot. <laughs> <laughs> and um, there, there's no vote on this item and there's no public comment. So you'll just discuss amongst yourselves. Thanks, Brittany. Right. And Alex is going to present most of the presentation. Um, and he's here. And I'll jump in with some examples in the middle. So thanks. Hi, good afternoon. I'm so happy to be here. I'm Alec Miller. I'm a senior city planner with the zoning administration team in CPD. Um, I've been working on this text amendment since I started with the city last July. So mm -hmm. I'm very happy to be here with this discussion item as a sort of information <laughs> sharing. And it's been um, a real pleasure working with Crystal and Brittany on making sure that I'm getting things right and how they work with in the landmark preservation world. Um, could you go to the next slide, please? Thank you so much, Brittany. Um, so today I'll give you just a little bit of background on this text amendment, where it came from and what it's intended to do. I'll talk quite a bit about administrative adjustments and a little bit about variances for reasons that will become very clear as we <laughs> move forward. And then we'll have a little time for discussion. Yeah. And um, so uh, the modernizing zoning variances um, text amendment essentially got its start in 2021 with council sponsors, uh, Councilwoman Kanich and Councilwoman Sandoval. Um, the first phase of the project remade how the Board of Adjustment works. So their role is um, taking some of the more nuanced and bigger cases um, where applicants are asking for relief from zoning standards. And so the first phase of the project looked at um, board qualifications, um, the board makeup and how those board members are appointed. And now this phase has been looking at the, um, the uh, review criteria and how that work gets done. And if we're hitting the right split of authority between CPD staff and the board of adjustment. Um, a lot of what drives how zoning relief is done in Denver has historically been driven by the city charter. Um, the charter was very specific for the last hundred, almost 100 years about how variances could be granted, 
what the vote threshold had to be and the review criteria for granting them. Um, so luckily on April 4th in that election, Denver voters um, voted 75 to 25 to allow the charter to be amended in order to clear the way for this text amendment essentially. Um, now we'll, we'll go on to the next slide. So uh, the purpose of the project is to um, streamline how zoning relief is granted while balancing zoning with other city goals. For example, historic preservation and preserving existing structures. Um, these are city goals that have to be met at the same time as implementing our zoning code. Um, I already mentioned the split of authority, but the bottom line is the vast majority of cases that go to the Board of Adjustment, over 80% are one and two unit residential. And um, a lot like the work that you all have done in today's meeting, it's often people trying to make the existing structure work for their growing family or their changing lifestyle. Um, and so we wanted to create some new paths to approval um, for reasonable requests. So that was one of the guiding principles of what we were doing. Let's go to the next one. Um, when it comes to zoning relief, the administrative adjustment is an, and should be the first stop on your way to the Board of Adjustment. Um, this is for the straightforward and minor requests that CPD processes. And um, we've got uh, review criteria uh, related to neighborhood compatibility and unusual physical conditions or circumstances that are applied to all administrative adjustments. Um, it, and this is in the new framework, except in the new paradigm, we'll go to the next slide, we'll have um, a set of standalone administrative adjustments that have their own eligibility and review criteria that don't then have to prove up that they are compatible with the neighborhood in some in uh, or have an unusual physical condition or circumstance. And so what we've done with this text amendment is created these new standalone AAs that you see on the screen. Um, and we've taken the historic structures or properties in a landmark district that used to be a variance that had to go to the Board of Adjustment and we've shifted it over to the administrative adjustment so that it's a staff approval instead of going uh, to both LPC and the Board of Adjustment. So it's an administrative approval now. Then we'll go to the next slide. So uh, once again today, um, someone asking for a variance based on their landmark status would come to this board and then they would also go to the Board of Adjustment um, and they would still have to meet um, the general criteria that are required of any variance that goes to the Board of Adjustment. In this new, in the new structure, um, they would come to the LPC and if you make your special finding about, um, about a compliance with the zoning code being adverse to the structure or the district, then they could come to come for an administrative adjustment and with your recommendation, the zoning administrator shall approve it. So we've tried to take some of the discretion away from the board of adjustment and instead say, if you make your special finding at LPC, then then the applicant gets their administrative adjustment. Let's go to the next slide. Um, so this is the language that will appear in Article 12 of the Denver Zoning Code um, after this goes through. Um, the, the big thing here is that most administrative adjustments are limited to certain parameters that are listed out in a table. But for those that are, contain a historic structure or in a landmark district, and they want to use this path forward, they can request for relief from any building form or design standard in Articles 3 through 10 of the Zoning Code. Um, okay, so we'll go to the next slide. So I'll just uh, jump in here, guys. I thought some examples would help you kind of see what we're talking about and what these changes will mean for us. 
Um, so for the first example, I used 3356 West 31st Avenue. This is a pro project you guys saw um, last November. Um, basically, this project was for this house at the bottom you can see here. Um, they wanted to go with a pop top addition uh, that you can see there on the left. It has changed slightly since then. Um, when staff originally met with this applicant, we really encouraged them to potentially do like a one story rear addition on this lot. Um, because there's kind of a whole row of these one and a half story structures on this street and we we're trying to get them to avoid doing a pop top if at all possible. Um, however, at the time, they told us with the very large garage that they had and the length of the lot that basically they were already at their lot coverage. And so they didn't want to have to get a variance for that, which would have made them go to the Board of Adjustment. Um, so that would have had them go to the Commission and also the Board of Adjustment. And as you're aware, we typically only do administrative adjustments for bulk plane and height. Um, and in this case, going forward with the new changes, um, it's really going to be for anything that we think um, would help to not create an adverse impact on the historic structures or the district. So in this case, this might have been one where we could say we really think that you know, you could slightly go over lot coverage to do a one story addition because that would be preferable to a pop top. And in this case, we could have done an administrative adjustment if you all agreed that doing this instead would create an adverse impact. Um, and so I really think this is going to help us um, give different paths forwards to applicants. Um, because obviously we understand their frustration when they have to go to two different boards and then through the whole building zoning process as well. Um, next slide. And then here's just another example. I think this was Jesse's project for 33 Gilpin Street. Um, they did need an administrative adjustment for height and bulk plane, um, but they also needed a variance in this case for lot coverage um, because they had a side gabled front structure doing a pop top on this really would have been an adverse impact to the character of the structure and the neighborhood. So they did a rear addition, um, but obviously um, that lot coverage was an issue going all the way back. So not only did they have to do an administrative adjustment, but a board of adjustment. Um, so in the future, again, we're, we're trying to cut out having to go to two boards and this could have been all put together as one thing that you're looking at and saying we're we're deviating from the zoning code so that it's better for the district and these historic structures. Um, and that's really what we were aiming to get with the changes to the code in relation to us. Next slide. Thank you, Crystal. That was very clear and very helpful. Um, so this is just a, a flow chart that shows how things are going to work and some of the different paths that will be available to people starting in the upper left once they apply to the LPC. Um, the request is reviewed by staff and a recommendation is made and then reviewed by the LPC. Um, if your board approves the AA request um, or makes the recommendation for an AA approval, then the zoning administrator will, then, I'm sorry, then LPC staff will issue an AA letter to the zoning administrator with the COA and stamped plans. And from there, the zoning administrator must issue the AA, the administrative adjustment. Um, if you hit that red uh, rectangle in the middle where the LPC does not approve the AA, the, the request, um, then, uh, it would not be approved by the zoning administrator, of course, um, but the applicant can redesign to comply with the Denver Zoning Code, um, and they would still have to get their COA. They still have to comply with all the landmark requirements at the end of the day. Um, and even if they redesign to comply or apply for a variance showing some other type of justifying circumstance like an unusual physical condition, they still need their COA and to meet all the landmark requirements. Um, and then of course, if they 
choose their so their last resort is they can appeal the decision to district court, but we won't dwell on that for too long. Um, and then next slide. And then we're at the discussion. I'm sorry, I mentioned that I had variance review criteria to look at with you, but um, I don't know how important it is at this point since um, your world will, will sort of live in the administrative adjustment um, after these changes go through. And um, let me also give you a sense of the time, the timeline. We are um, going to city council for the public hearing on Monday, the 22nd. Um, and if it's approved, then it would go into effect on the 25th. So quick timeline. Um, and I am happy to answer any questions and I will certainly look to Crystal and, and Brittany if, if there's a need. Um, but that's, that's the text amendment. Awesome, Alec, thank you. Crystal, thank you. Um, commissioners, do you, I, I can't imagine why you'd have any questions for Crystal or for Alec, but, <laughs> but um, any questions? Just a quick comment um, as someone who has been an applicant in a situation and Crystal knows this of uh, uh, a project that went over the um, went over the building coverage before that was something that the LPC could could deal with. I think that this is just a very logical um, kind of streamlining of things and I, I think it also it keeps the um, the value of landmarks, um, but also kind of makes it less of a burden for applicants to, um, yeah, be able to pursue different options. So I think it's great. Thank you. Anybody else? Any questions or comments for Alec and Crystal? Wow, you guys are getting off easy. I thought there might no. be lots of questions. <laughs> no, me too. <laughs> I know it seems like kind of a lot, but I, I think these expanded measures are really gonna help us and also help you guys get better projects overall. Um, yeah, so. and then, and you know, you all are here to help us through this, so I'm not too worried. I think it will help streamline things a little bit. All right, then if there are any other questions, and Alec, Crystal, thank you very much. Um, Brittany, um, is there, are there any other items that you can think of that uh, for the good of the order? Nope, that is the conclusion of today's meeting. Yeah, all righty. Okay, uh, commissioners, thank you very much. And Steph, as always, thank you very much. Very much appreciate everything that you do for us. Um, it is 2.34 p.m. on 5-16-2023, and I am closing the meeting. I am adjourning the meeting. Everybody have a great afternoon, and uh, we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye-bye. Thank you all. See you all. Bye.